What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode with your boy Franklin. Right. Our second generation African migrants or parents losing their grip. This is one of the emails that I get from you guys. But before we crack on, this episode is sponsored by Sendwave. Sendwave is basically an app that you can download within the two shakes of a duck's tail from Apple iTunes Store or Google Play Store, okay? So it allows you to send money from the UK, the US and or Canada to Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda or Ghana, okay? And it's dead easy. There is no um, additional commission like some of the high street you know, competitors will do and then where you're having to put extra money on top of whatever amount you're sending, okay? Now, once you go through the steps of registering in the app, the uh, Sendwave app, which is dead easy. It's as straightforward as blinking your eyes, trust me. What's interesting is, off your first transaction, if you put in Franklin, my name as it is on the screen, okay, you get 10 pounds or $10, whichever currency applies, added to your first transaction. So, for example, at the time of filming this, the rate of um, pound, a pound to Naira is about 450 Naira, right? To a pound, yeah? So if you were sending money using the Sendwave app, you get extra 4,500 Naira on top of your money to your friends and your family. That's amazing. That's a fantastic gesture of goodwill from Sendwave. Okay? Use my name, uh, Franklin, and just get sending. Okay? That's it. Now, let's crack on. So, basically, this person sent me an email a few days ago, and, um, um, the lady was talking about how, you know, uh, particularly here in the UK, how some of our, our children, you know, of, you know, migrants, second generation migrants or, you know, African parents and stuff, uh, we have issues of all these crimes and things, particularly in cities like London and stuff and you know maybe less opportunities a lot of them are turning to crimes and you know we're looking at the bigger picture there are people that are, whose children are successful within our communities who are doing well but when you look at the bigger picture of their concerns that there is this issue of you know knife crime and you know guns and all that and where, whereby um, a lot of you know black kids in the black community are turning to crimes and some of them at a very tender age their lives are plastered with or littered with um you know criminal records and which would then which would then de deprive them from effectively integrating into the you know society and being able to move up you know career ladders or get you know proper jobs and have a wonderful future like their you know maybe white and other counterparts now um truth be told if I may use, you know, the words, you know, the, the word immigrant, you know, uh, we have a set type of, you know, challenges. Number one thing is, you know, you might have a thousand of us right now lined up and you'd find out there's already a series of stories on how each and every person got into the UK or the US and stuff. There are some people who are migrants who've been here 10 years, 12 years, you know, that's like a normal thing in the immigrant community 10, 12, 15 years before people then get the chance to regularize their status. I think it's safe to say that, you know, for the most part, it's a system that's not designed for us. And the challenges are there. And when I say not designed for us, that's not to suggest that, you know, to use that saying as a form of um, excuse and, and stuff like that. There are, you know, uh, cases of successful migrants and all that stuff, but I'm looking at the bigger picture now. Now, when it comes to the children and stuff, are the parents losing grips and, 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 and stuff? It's a very challenging one. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And, you know, I personally worry about when you look at all these youngins, our teenagers, young boys and girls, particularly the young males, you know, these are meant to be heads of the, the, the you know, families that are yet to happen in the near, not so distant future. And a, a lot of them have their police records already plastered with, you know, with criminal records, which means a catastrophic deprivation of opportunities as they move on, you know, the inability to integrate effectively within the society or get proper jobs and be able to work into, you know, in corporations. It's already challenging enough being, being, being black or brown around here. And one of the fundamental problems that immigrant parents face on the side of the world is you find out, you find in most immigrant homes and families where dad, moms, it's a very, to me, it's a standard template. 
you are out 24 7 grafting okay so take for example i'm talking hypothetically now somebody who is a maybe a security guard i don't know or maybe works as an administrator or managerial or whatever or nurse you work within the health you know sector you work for the nhs national health service and 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 the truth is you may be working day shift you have your long hours dad's working mom's working and what tends to happen is if once they the family start to raise kids you know you have no choice you then have to drop them with child minders and stuff so for the best part of the day when you commute to work when you're in your respective workplaces the children spend the sizable chunk of you know the day at school okay and the truth is the school here in the uk in the us and basically outside of africa they're not exactly designed to uphold your african values or to uphold or to instill your cultural values or whatever you believe in into your children the curriculums and the system is designed to constantly impress on the young and impressionable minds of the children the the their own cultural beliefs here in england whatever they deem fit do you understand me so what it means is your children our children spend the best part of their days in the classrooms with people who are not emotionally attached you know to them and um you know learning whatever subjects the way they've been designed by the state and then nine out of ten times so, so sometimes some children after school have to go to child minders or even in some cases after school you get home maybe dad sees them one or two hours or mom sees them one or two hours and they have to go to night shift they're left by themselves if depending on their age and stuff it's something i call a vicious cycle you know it's it's a sort of entrapment the way the life in the west is designed it's it's very difficult you know in africa for example it's very it's possible to have house even at that you, you may have house helps, you may be able to have maybe uh, family members around the corner, you might have your grandmother, grand grandparents who might help you with babysitting. Depending if they're still alive, they're not, you know, tied down with health problems and stuff, they're not too elderly and stuff like that. You might, some people are lucky enough, but for the most part, the life in the West is every man to their own cross. You carry your own cross, you know, even if my blood brother or my blood sister was living next door, the truth is they have to go and find their own daily bread. They probably have their own kids. So it's physically impossible for them to be able to take on my kids or be able to help me look after occasionally, maybe on weekends, maybe to say, hey, yeah, you know, go, go, go spend a night or a couple of days with them, with your cousins and stuff like that. But for the most part, they can't. So then you have to go to child minders. You have to, you know, shell out a ton of money, which costs huge amounts of money. So what am I trying to say? And one of the well-known uh, ways of living or in terms of accommodation, it's a lot of immigrants, a lot of us live in council estates, you know, council properties, which is, you know, a lot cheaper than living in, you know, privately rented properties, which are, they charge astronomical rates and, you know, prices and stuff. I'm, I'm sure this is a common knowledge. Now, within the council estate, it's known to harbor a lot of unscrupulous, you know, cretins and, you know, people who have a blatant, other children who have a blatant disregard for the rules and regulation of the society or for the law. And the chances of your children being reeled in into gangs and being forced by peer pressure to make wrong decisions whilst you are busy at work, the chances are very high, you know. There's a lot of crime rates are high in most of this council. I'm using a place like London as example. And it's, it's similar across the cities and, and stuff. When you're not there to be able to effectively parent and stuff. Most parents, I give I give credit. They try, they, they do their best. But like I always say, one of the major problems in our community is black parents, we are very quick to turn to religion. We try, we believe, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a generational thing because it's what you know, right? You believe that religion can be used to tame and cage these children. Nine out of ten times, a lot of these children, because they haven't got a choice. You know, here, in, here, here abroad, even out in Africa, you know, they, they have to go to church, you have to wake up for the so-called morning devotion and stuff, and they, they want to live their life. They want to, you know, they, some of them don't exactly. I've spoken to youths who 
don't exactly believe in what their parents have sort of imbibed in them and stuff, but they haven't got a choice because they live under your roof and they have to abide, they have to go to church and stuff. So if a child misbehaves, one of the common thing in, in the African community or most homes is you start saying you're calling a pastor, you're calling an apostle, a reverend. Sorry, what the bloody hell is the reverend father got to do with that child? The reverend father is not that child's father. The, that's your child. That child is 100% your responsibility. You are the father, you are the mother, but you are hoping that they can use some Jesus template, some religious template to try to mentally cage that child rather than focusing on, you know, on, 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 on the, you know, moral side of things and emphasizing those things and say, hey man, if you punch a police officer, you're going to get done for assault or if you punch a, a neighbor down the road you're going to these are the consequences you're going to pick up you know criminal record that would mean this and this and this you can't work you're going to have criminal record you, you you might get locked up for this and most of the time some of these parents haven't got a clue themselves so we use religion we use religion and to try to tame and all the same old stories and it never works and the vicious cycle is like i said earlier the life abroad is, is crazy and whilst people are out grafting, some people are trying, you know, because you need money, you want to buy homes, you want to pay for the life that you want, you want to pay for the car, you want to pay for your rent, your council tax, your road tax and the lease goes on, right? You've got families back home, you've got projects you're trying to embark on. The children tend to suffer. And another thing is your your typical African parent is constantly trying to tell the child, oh, well, when I grew up in Ghana, when I grew up in Africa, and nine out of 10 times, that child that you were telling stories about Ghana or Nigeria or Zimbabwe, one, wasn't born in Ghana, wasn't born in Nigeria, wasn't born in Zimbabwe. So uh, they don't understand. They're looking at you like, what kind of foolishness is this? They cannot align with you know, what you're banging on about. So it, it becomes this power tussle, this back and forth. It's a major problem that a lot of homes you know, deal with. They just look at, oh, my African parents. If you look at YouTube, for example, there are tons of videos where you see a lot of these youngins that make videos about you know, my African parents. These, my parents say these are saying, oh, Lord, bollocks I cannot even align with. And it's the truth. So rather than you emphasizing on the stories of how you, you grew up in, 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 in Africa, why don't you laser target your focus on 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 a sound moral upbringing where you are but then again you're unable to give what you don't have so the quality of the background or the upbringing of the parent themselves will also have an effect on how they raise their kids but the society in the west as a whole is not exactly designed to uphold african values i think we're clear on that so and more and more of our children young teenagers are turning to crimes and stuff you know it's not because the parents are exactly bad but the state is raising the kids the state is making laws to say you cannot reprimand you cannot tell them off you cannot do this you cannot do that recently like not too long ago scotland has passed a law it's now a criminal offense that you cannot even do this to a child so if you were in a store and your little child pulls down a crate of eggs on or they were throwing unnecessary tantrums embarrassing tantrums in the public and you just take the back of the hand hey behave that now is regarded as a criminal offense now i'm not suggesting that inflicting a child with um um beatings and and and, and physical you know abusing or, or whatever you want to call it is you know guarantees um, a fantastic um how do you say that guarantees the fact that the child will turn out well we're banging on about this there are people who have been emotionally wrecked because of the physical abuse that they've had to endure during childhood there is that and it doesn't exactly guarantee and there are people that the parents didn't have to strike them down every now and then and they turned out to be great and fantastic people within the black community and the society as a whole so what's the way forward there is no way to to sort this so it's either we get on with the lives as it is and you just hope for the best that your children turn out to be fantastic citizens of the society they turn out to be great as desired every sane parent every parent want their children to be great 
um, want their children to do well. I want my children to be an improved version of myself. I want them to be able to contribute positively to the society at large. If I've done this well in life, I want my children to triple and quadruple and a thousandfold go beyond where I've gotten in life. We all want that. But the truth is, sometimes the harsh reality of life or the harsh realities of life, they play out differently. What do you think? What do you think um, African parents can do differently about our children in the West, living abroad and raising our kids? It's bloody challenging. It's just bloody challenging. It's almost impossible. And I always hammer, and with, without, you know, without due respect to you, if you, whatever floats your boat in terms of your religious beliefs, you cannot use religion to cage or to to raise a child. Well, some people have bought into that, but you soon realize there are people who were raised in Christian homes, Muslim homes, or whatever religion, they turn out to be crooks. They turn out to be terrible citizens of the society. They end up in jail. They, you know, so what can we do differently? How can we improve the lives and upbringing of our children in the West? Because the state is not gonna do it for you. The government is not gonna do it for you. In fact, if they have their way, they don't want you bringing your African culture. They don't want to have it. They have a disregard for it. They want their ways. Our way or we'll remove your children, especially if they're a lot younger. What do you think? Let's keep that conversation going on below. It's your boy, Franklin. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, um, this episode, as I said, sponsored by Sendwave app. Go into Apple Store or the you know Google Play Store, download it within the two shakes of a duck's tail. And once you've registered, you get 10 pounds or 10 dollars, whichever currency applies, um, added to your first transaction by adding my name or say my YouTube username, Franklin, as spelt you know, on my YouTube channel or on the screen as um, your promo code, okay? And then you just crack on using Sendwave. It's a fantastic app and the offer is on Franklin and get sending, okay? Thank you, and um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Look around, man, show your love. Smash that button. If you wanna support my channel, look in the description below. There's a link to my PayPal account, my Patreon account. Did you know you can you can join my Patreon account and support the channel for as little as $5 a month? Okay, if that's your cup of tea, anyway. And if you wanna do a one-off support, PayPal, there's a link to my PayPal account. Thank you to your boy Franklin, and I'll definitely catch you on the next one. Let's keep that conversation going on below. Peace and love. Bye now.